We've never done this. Yeah, we haven't. We've yeah, I'm happy this. to be here. Thank you for having me. What a happy start to yeah. the year for you and Don. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I mean, I don't want to go too much into it. It's personal, and I know more than anything, being a father, that when you start a family, it really becomes about um, creating a safe space to do that and to and to grow. Um, but you know, we're thirty, forty-five minutes into into you sort of sharing this news with your fans yeah. on Instagram and stuff. So, uh, can I ask how you feel now that you know everyone knows and it feels very celebratory? Mm, I'm really happy. It feels really freeing because I don't have to be. You know, we we go out all the time to eat or to run errands or to whatever, and I would just be wearing a coat because I didn't want anyone to yeah. sneak a picture or make an announcement for us. Um, so yeah, it's a good feeling to just be like out with it now. You know? Yeah, for sure. And I think it's amazing that um, you know you and Don found each other, such incredible, unique artists in your own right, but that you get to build something that can exist in the creative space if you wanted to, but you've got something so much kind of bigger in a way. Like family yeah. is like, it's the greatest journey you'll ever go on, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Our, our relationship is a lot deeper than, you know, all of this other stuff. So we definitely like to balance ha- keeping our private life private, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. How's it made you feel about, um, you know, where, where you were as a kid growing up and those key moments that you discovered art and... What sort of music did for you when you were a kid and, and you were figuring out your identity? Um, h- how did music show up for you? What was When did you need it most? I think for me, music always was um, therapeutic, empowering, healing. Uh, a lot of times I was the kid because si- I have a lot of siblings, but mm-hmm. they're all a lot older than me. So I was the baby of the house. So nobody wanted to play with me because they were all so much <laughs> older than me, you know. So they would always be playing and I was always the one that was like kind of on my own. Music was definitely for me that escape, I guess, you know. And where did you escape to? What was the music that really sort of captured you and made you realize that, that this was yours and that this music spoke to you and gave you that safe space? Mm, so much different music. I kind of became just obsessed with finding obscure bands and music from other countries and music in all types of different languages um you know europe africa india wherever and all types of different eras and that's when i really started digging into oldies and and all of that because there's such a timeless feel to your music you make these really amazing modern pop records but there is something about the way you perform, you write them, and and on stage, certainly, that it feels timeless. It doesn't feel like you're trying Thank to you. tap into anything too modern, meta, meta modern. It's just very like, do you know what I mean? There's an, there is an oldie feel to the way that you mm. present your music. Yeah, I think just um, for me, like vocal layering, vocal stacking, harmonies, um, all of that plays a big part in the essence of my writing and... Um, and my process as a singer-songwriter. So I think no matter what genre I experiment with, that's what kind of makes it all still tie in and still have my essence no matter what. Mm, for sure. I mean, this is why you've built such a a broad and, and really interesting body of work over the course of your career to date. And here we are with your, you know, with a brand new album, um, which is start to finish just very tasteful. And the flow is... I know you put a lot into making sure that the track listing and everything felt very seamless. Yeah, no, absolutely. I always, I care a lot about my track listing, but it's definitely the last thing that I do. I try to just create freely and not worry too much about like thematically or sonically how things are going to fit together until the end. The album's called Orchideas. Um, obviously, that has an important uh, resonance through the music. Um, it's a beautiful image. It's a beautiful flower. I'm a fan as well. I love to have them in my house without yeah. fail, without fail. Um, <laughs> so where did you land on that? And, and, and how did that sort of help you create the mood you were trying to achieve with this record? You know, I think it was perfect because for me, it, ha- it has that sense of timelessness like we were talking about um it's also the national flower of colombia and this being my second latin album i feel like it's always been important for me when i make a body of work in spanish to um pay tribute to a lot of the genres i listened to growing up and and my heritage so that played a part and then i didn't i didn't actually know at the time but later i found out it's actually the flower of fertility and so then after i found that i was pregnant i was like oh this is really so perfect because you know i have been pregnant most of the rollout so it's been it's been a very different experience for me what did you learn speaking of different experiences how did you push yourself and what did you emerge from making this record that that changed you as an artist i think i i think i pushed myself 
in in ways um energetically because I'm not really I don't have that much dance music and so this is this is my dance album um so I think I learned a lot more about just pushing myself to make all types of different genres you know like there's merengue there's um more perreo there's house there's latin disco so I guess just playing more with I learned a lot more about my versatility I would say but even on song number one right Como I see when, when oh, it yeah, starts I love, that song. I love that song and when it starts I'm like oh great we, we're going to get into this place that I know and love really well with Cali where I'm going to find myself in, in this kind of really meditative zone mm. and then to your point tempo kicks in all of a sudden yeah it's, it's like, like it, kind it, of a shock it's yeah. a, but it's beautiful and, and, and I think that that flows through the record there is a lot of dance floor groove and tempo and dynamic on the album but I don't feel like you rushed yourself to keep up I feel like you made the tempo work in your flow does that make sense yeah yeah it's still very it's still very me I know it, it it's weird because I feel like my core fan base any artist core fan base they're always gonna expect a certain thing from you or want a certain thing from you but I think as an artist it's really important for me at least to never be predictable and I really actually don't like um when I when I love artists and I love their body of works and then it's like every time they drop something it's kind of like I already know what it's gonna sound like every song kind of sounds like they're the same. thinking for us as fans almost rather than thinking for themselves <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so so I love to just have fun with it and keep um, keep everybody on their toes you know what could it be but let's talk about your fan base for a second because um, you know everybody obviously when you build a group of fans around you that help to support your career through those changes, through the, the hits and the, and the experiments, um, you, you respect it. But I feel like you have one of those fan bases that has really flown the flag throughout the whole entire time. Like very passionate. I've been in the crowds. <laughs> I've seen it. I'm one of them. Um, <laughs> you know, do you feel that they, they have expectations of you? Because I certainly don't. And I feel like actually they, they want you to thrive and to grow. Yeah, I think a lot of them are very emotionally intelligent people because a lot of the music is emotionally intelligent. So it naturally draws mm -hmm. people that, you know, can see beyond the surface level, um, you know, the numbers and the like pop star type expectations that people put on artists. Um, but I think the young ones are probably, the, you know, like the Stan type of ones, Stan Twitter type people will be the ones that they care more about. You know, like, oh, why aren't you promoting this more? Why aren't you doing this more? Why aren't you doing that more? That's just access, right? People just want access. They want to they want to know what you're thinking. They want to know what's going on. Yeah. Or I feel like they just want me to, they want me to promote my music more and, like, work harder for my career. Like, you know, they want things for you, and that's great, and that's beautiful. But at the same time, um, for me, that's not, I didn't start making music to have, like, an oversaturated career and, I'm happy with where I'm at. So, so you've, you've felt confident all the way through, even during those moments when certain fans or people have felt like that song should have been bigger or this should have happened. Because you're right, we're all in a race, right? Everyone's in yeah. such a hurry all the time. You've been able to meditate through that experience. You knew that this was moving at the pace you were comfortable with. Yeah, I just, I just look at um, a lot of industries and just anything that, you know, contributes to capitalism, it just ends up being like a rat race very much. Yeah. And so for me... I always try to remind myself when people try to make me feel competitive or try to make me feel like, oh, well, you got to be, you know, you got to be this, you got to be that. I'm like, that's that's cool and everything. But at the end of the day, I, I am who I am and I'm going to do what I came to do. And I feel confident about that and um, constantly reminding myself, like, why I started doing this in the first place. It was never for that. So, so what is success to you? What's the metric of value? Oh, for me, I think success, like... Luxury, I learned, is really just being able to do whatever you want every day, <laughs> having peace because freedom nothing, of counsel, yeah, right? Yeah, having peace because nothing in the world is worth stress and the effects that it has on our bodies. Mm. Um, and yeah, happiness, happiness over everything. I feel like you know your work ethic is is something that people are now starting to really understand. I mean, you've continued to collaborate with people. I mean, you, you're constantly working, touring. You, you know, you're selling out arenas now. You're really hyper fit. I mean, you've put the work in. This doesn't happen for nothing. Yeah, yeah. I did, and I did work a lot. I'm still doing a lot of work, but I think that's why I'm kind of in a place in my life where I'm like, you know, um, 
I grew up in a Latino household mm. and, you know, my my family was an immigrant family. So you very much always have the mentality, you know, that capitalistic mentality and of, of constantly having to be productive and constantly needing to make money. And I think trying to free myself a bit more from that is kind of where I'm at right now. So I'm mm. still I create every day. Um, I have a whole nother album I'm ready to drop this year. <laughs> <laughs> Give me 20 minutes, I'll get I'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. I can't get to that just yet. I'm still I'm still in love with this album. So that's that's just a part of who I am and what I do every day in my lifestyle and my life. I don't really look at it as a job. It's more like it's just who I am and it's what I do. But um in regards to like, you know, going on press tours and going on tours in general, I don't I don't tour very often and um, I don't, I don't pop out very often. So but when you do shows, though, I mean, I was at Flognor. Yeah, yeah, you stole that. You stole that show. Oh, thank you so much. It was amazing. You had fun that day. You know, the tour was a little bit stressful. The second half of the tour, I was pregnant, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it was a little bit stressful because I was trying to hide my pregnancy. Um, and so I think that kind of took a little bit of the fun out of the performance because. You know, just trying to be like, oh, I don't want to be too close, and mm. then someone get a video, and my bump is showing. But it was so tasteful. But it was so tasteful because it was so much silhouette. What I saw and the way that you were at the back, you know, you never felt like you were tucking yourself back. It was all so art. It was the art direction was incredible. Oh, thank you so much. When I think about when I listen to this album, it sounds very free. It sounds like you feel very happy making this record. That you knew that you were on a wave. That you know the. The first album that you'd made, the first Latin album that you'd made, in a way kind of freed you up to, to approach this one with a sense of like, only your expectations, only your sense of what you can achieve. Is that fair to say? It feels very different to me. Yeah, it's definitely different than any other body of work that I ever made. I think I had a lot more fun with it. Um, and I had a lot of, it was a lot of work just because I... I kind of have gone back to my roots in the sense of when I started making music, it was just me by myself in my room. When I came to L.A. and when I went to work on Isolation, I felt like I had so much to prove. So I went everywhere to work on that album. I went in the room with everybody. You know, I I flew to Ohio to get the feature from Bootsy. I flew to, you know, wherever to work with um, Kevin from Tame Impala to work with Damon Albarn from Gorillaz. I flew everywhere and did everything I could. That's why that album took three years to make. Um, And then now I'm just kind of back in that place where I'm like, so anyway, I'm here in my house, in my room by myself, and whoever wants to send me whatever, I'm happy with that. But um, I kind of already know who I like to work with. And a lot of times I just write songs in the shower um, things will just pop up into my head when I'm in the shower and I will just record them and then I will send them to producers like, oh, I have this idea, da da da, and we work over emails. And so it's complicated to work that way. You prefer it though? But I do prefer it because I think I just am exerting a lot less energy into like the moving around and the shuffling around and trying to focus that energy more into. Um, just playing a full part in all the executive production so are you a homebody do you think at, at, yeah at absolutely heart? yeah 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 very much <laughs> it, it's an interesting business to be in and you're not alone i've met many artists who find their peace away mm. but they're drawn into the outside in a very f- forward-facing way were there times before you could con- sort of control i don't like the word control but manage the way you show up works for you better where it was hard it was it was tough being a homebody and having to go out there and hustle and be in front of so many people all the time yeah it was it was hard because when I came to LA you know I like I really wanted to just um be as open as I could about getting in as many sessions in as many rooms as I could which is tough those sessions are tough man I mean when you walk into a room and it's like hey nice to meet you let's write a song about my inner thoughts I, I, it was really <laughs> unproductive for me yeah. yeah and I mean I write all my own music but even just meeting so many different people and then it's like you might not even get anything out of the session because you actually didn't connect musically or whatever it's like I feel like a lot of time was wasted but I had to have that experience when I came here you know to to try it out and do it and now I feel like I have my core group of people that I know that they know how to work with me and they I know who you know if I'm like oh I want something that sounds like this I'm gonna send this to so and so today I'm gonna send this to this person and then who showed up on the record I mean who who's in the who's in the scene well the first song 
I did it with Carter. I really like working with Carter. He's a really cool person. And then um, I brought Soundwave in just to like give it an extra oomph. So Soundwave came in and he added some drums and he added some some sounds. And What did you hear that you knew Soundwave was going to bring? What's unique? Because this happens a lot. I hear, apart from Soundwave being incredible and making his own music and with people from scratch, but I know that he is the person that gets brought in at times to go, hey, it's missing you. What is it missing? You know, for me, because when I first started the song, I had played Carter some stuff and... I felt like he understood what I wanted to do with the song, but something something about the drums. It was something about the drums that I was just like, I just feel like Wave could could really take it there. And um I played him the whole album and I had him jump in on a few songs just to just to get them, you know, just to tighten them up with me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they they did the first one together. It sounds so good as well. Like Thank like, you. when those drums come in, man, it's so crazy. I mean it's 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 almost dreamscape. It's it, you've, it, a lot of this record, even when you're like being very direct with your with, melodically and rhythmically, feels like it's coming from quite a a sort of half awake space mm. for me. I think that's I think that's the thing that that definitely ties it into the general essence of my music is that even though it is so different from the other stuff that I have, it is dreamy still, which is a word that gets thrown around a lot when it comes to my my songs so i think that's definitely the thing that ties it in still and makes it still me you know have you ever written a song in a dream oh I, I actually did wake up a couple times from uh from um you know there was a song in a dream and i woke up and i tried to remember it and i think i remembered it like one time but it's rare one of the great things about this record is that, you know, the collaborations you've chosen, it feels very much in keeping with, with some of the most exciting voices that are out there doing their own thing, you know, Peso, Carol. And it, it feels to me like, you know, this, this album is so in, in perfect time in terms of what's happening with Latin music. Why did you work with Peso? What do you love about him? Well, for me, I just love Mexico in general. Um, uh, my uncle is Mexican and he was like kind of like a part-time dad to me. So... Um, I've always felt really close to Mexican culture and Mexican people. And I wanted to incorporate somebody from Mexico who was like putting on, you know, on a global scale for them right now. And to me, that's him right now, for sure. Igual que un angel, the song, which is, um, I mean, there's, there's kind of like a central character that moves through this, um, through the song. And, and I wonder how much, you know, because I know you write very personally, but yeah. also how much you kind of rely on character study sometimes in order to develop these songs into something. I never really think of it as a character study, but I think that, yeah, thematically, when I did look back at all the music, I seen that it was, you know, it's, it's very girly, it's very much a celebration of womanhood, it's very, you know, um, princess, you know, the girl like that, you know, gets what she wants, and and um, I think it's, I think it's has a lot of important messages for for young women and you know no matter how old you are i think it's important to understand your worth and and add text so that's pretty much the whole album what page of this particular album is that song attached to what is the song what is the story in this particular song this song well i really wanted to focus on you know i'm talking about this this girl this woman and how she doesn't necessarily care about the other things that people might want her to care about in in today's society so it's kind of a you know in a way challenging the societal norms for girls today in the sense of you know she doesn't care about money she doesn't care about materialistic things she doesn't care about fame she doesn't care about whatever she cares about her soul she cares about her heart and I think it's a beautiful message to send because um we need more people like that in the world and uh yeah, so I think he was great for it because, like I said, I love to make music that's unpredictable and a lot of people were scared how he would sound on this and didn't know how he would sound on it and he really killed it. So. <laughs> he killed it. Yeah. Kelly Uchis, we have, uh, it's great to, to see you at this point after what's been one of the most interesting and I think kind of exciting journeys since I've been in America watching you sort of grow as an artist and... It made me think about the beginning because I know that it's been with its twists and turns. You know, you signed your record deal out of the UK. I wonder, looking back on that now, whether that f- feels unorthodox in hindsight, the idea of you kind of signing in a territory where you're not actually based and, yeah. <laughs> you know, what the yeah. challenges were to that and how and how you may have done that differently or, or how it worked. Absolutely, yeah. I think 
like how I told you, I started music very naively. I didn't even really think about the fact like I'm gonna be a part of this thing called the music industry now. I didn't know anything about the music industry. I didn't know anybody in the music industry. Um, I just knew that I love to create, I love to make music, I love to be creative, and that's what I wanted to dedicate my life to. When people first started reaching out to me to do, um, to sign and whatever, I, I was solely looking at, at labels as a bank. I was just, you know, like, I need money to make this album, I have no money, I need money to live somewhere. Yeah. To me, it was more so a move out of uh, desperation and not having access or privilege to being able to, you know, have the resources that it took to make isolation or to, you know, live. So give help me get create some infrastructure so that I can do what I've been doing. Yeah, yeah. like I just need I just exactly like I just need some funding. So cuz that was my first album and I mean I had saved up some money from from working to move out to LA but it wasn't it wasn't that much money to you know I didn't know how long I was going to be able to string myself along living in Los Angeles so yeah I feel that I feel that if I could do it over again I definitely wouldn't have signed so early and I mean like a lot of other artists you know I got a really bad deal (laughs) so um I wouldn't I wouldn't have done it no definitely not were there times when that stress potentially kind of infiltrated your creative process or your confidence um there's times where it can feel really restricting um and kind of, um, I think it's definitely frustrating. I think it's really frustrating because especially when you're really young and you don't know anything and then you just have people around you that just want to get paid off of you and they're like, oh, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. So, and they're just like telling you that the contract is something is not. And, you know, you know, the system is created to make us have to rely on other people to read the contracts for us and other people to to um get their percentages and everything so i think there's a lot of ulterior motives a lot of times when people try to get young artists to sign really soon and so what's your advice to young artists who are fans of yours right now listening right now i mean you've got the benefit of wisdom now and you've come through the other side you're a bona fide success and you're able to manage your career as you want so what's your advice now my advice to them would be to definitely wait as long as they can um before signing with anybody and to just try to develop a team, a group of people around them that really has their best interests at heart because there is a lot of people that take advantage. I love how honest you are in your writing. Thank you. The good times, the tough times, you know, you put it all on the table. What subject or or what, when when is it hardest for you to let go of what you're feeling into the music? Are there times when it's, it's challenging trying to put it into words? No, honestly, um, making music and being creative is the easiest part of my life. Like that's, um, I have uh, I speak to a therapist now and she talks to a lot of other artists and she told me the other day she was like you're the only artist that I talk to that when we talk we literally just talk about personal life family like real shit, real issues and every, the, she's like all the, the artists that I talk to they're like you know they're going through like um, they're going through like trying to figure out what to do next and what where to you know and for me that's like the easiest most simplest part of my life so I don't I don't have that type of struggle how do you how do you find out from your therapist that you, you, <laughs> you go to you go to band camp therapy that's what I want to know because I don't want to know from my therapist who the my therapist is talking to like you know, yeah <laughs> so I, I know, know. Co- I know a couple other her clients but I know that <laughs> you know who they are yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I do know who a couple of them are but that's because um when someone had recommended me her they were recommending her in the sense that they were like there is things that we go through and being in the spotlight and being you know the, those types of things do affect people's mental health so that was the main reason why yeah, i was yeah, like oh yeah. okay that's cool that she's worked with other people that have my my job because she can have she has a little bit of insight into dealing with you know i i wonder sort of like if you have any sort of insight personally as to what drew you into the arts given that there are things internally that you uh, probably had to figure out and are now figuring out as a as an adult art was the most easiest decision I ever had to make in my life um I never questioned once what I was gonna do in my life from what age Mm, probably like 15 16 yeah yeah I was like yeah I'm not going to 
um, pers- I'm not going to try to have like a backup plan. I'm just going to go straight for this. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But this is what I'm going to do in my life no matter what. And that's got to be the kind of the secret in a way, doesn't it? Because I think at the end of the day, it's like someone said to me, they're in a successful band. And they said that when they signed their deal, their lawyer said, if you guys can focus on this for 10 years and not think about anything else, just this, you might have a shot. Right. And it is, it's about complete dedication and focus, isn't it? Yeah. I think also, I think everybody has their own intentions behind why they choose to dedicate their lives to what they dedicate their lives to. And for me, I'm, I was just very centered on the fact that this is who I am and these are going to be the contributions I make to the world. And whether or not I became successful was kind of, it was, of course, it's like, of course you want to um, get something out of the work that you do, but it was really just more so I will not be happy with my life if I'm not doing this, you know. I mean, in, in many respects, I can imagine that you must feel more secure and comfortable in your decision making process and the and the speed at which you choose to move because you're where a majority of your peers are in your own way. You're in the arenas. Yeah. You're playing high up at the festival bills. You're doing great streaming numbers. You haven't hit records. I mean, and you did it without having to compete. I never yeah. felt like you were competing with anyone. I think that when you car- when you very much carve out your own your own lane and and you have your own world and um I've never I, I don't really keep up that much with what other people are doing. Yeah. Um and I think that's just because I'm always so focused on on what's going on in my own life and my own personal stuff and 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 then finding time outside of that to still stay creative and all of that. I just don't have time to be worried about what other people got going on. So So what's inspires the, the the idea of a collaboration is it is it a personal relationship? I mean Yeah, like all of that. Yeah, like Carol it was definitely like, you know, she's the biggest artist in Colombia. Like that's, you know, that's uh really important to me. She's a beautiful person. She's a great person and um JT, same, you know, that's my friend and I love her and I love everything that she's doing. I think her choosing to chase her uh, solo career is like something that I really um, admire and how hard she works, I really admire. And then. Have you given her words of encouragement as such? uh, We definitely talk a lot. We definitely talked a lot about just, you know, all of the, all of the difficulties that you face as a woman and, 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 you know, she, she goes through real stuff too. So, you know, just, trying to balance all of that while also trying to keep pushing in in your career is is always going to be a challenge so like now more than ever I try to focus on center myself in in why I started I want to contribute music music is my contribution all the other stuff I think sometimes you can get very lost in like trying to prove who you are trying to prove the things you stand for trying to prove that you're a great, good person and and like all these other things that at the end of the day I, I know myself and I know who I am and so I feel I'm you know I'm in I'm in a very different place in regards to I guess how much I, I share as well um of of things outside of music so I'm just focusing on sharing music. I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact you've taken the time to talk to me. I mean, I know you don't do this very often. Um, the album is is just, as I said, such a tasteful, brilliant exercise in storytelling and honesty and tempo. Um, and I wondered what your favorite song on it is right now. Uh, I do. I really love Como Así. I really love El Aito. Um What's my other favorite song? I think right now those are probably my top two. And where are you going next? Where's this album that you're working on right now? What can you tell us? I'm not giving <sighs> oh too much gosh. away. It's so different from 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 both of these projects, and I think um, I will say it's going back to a lot of I want to say like soul music, and I think a more elevated version of kind of where I started. So I think that my core, like my OG fan base is, is really going to love it. And I, I feel really happy about it and I really love it. So I would say a lot of like oldies inspired, oldies soul type, but 
in a different way. Can you describe the moment when you realized that that was the direction in life's path that you wanted to take creatively were where it hit you where you were like oh this is what I want to say next I don't know it just it just happened I mean that that one I've been working on it the whole time that I've been that I've been pregnant so I think I I got into a very you know pregnancy it changes you so much and then a lot of other things happen in my life that that were really it was like everything a lot of things happened all at once last year that were like really big, you know, like points like grieving and and uh, and becoming becoming pregnant and grieving and, and just all these things that I was just like, why is this all happening at once? And it made me take a step back and 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 I guess want to make music that's that's more like at the core of. It, I would say it's my most existential body of work. It's a lot more vulnerable than anything that I've ever done. And I, I slow it down. Yeah. Is that when therapy really st- started to, to help? No, you know what? I've been doing therapy for a couple of years now. And I think that at this point, you know, I started it because I wanted to heal like childhood stuff and... um and then even more after I found that I was becoming a mother, you know, I really wanted to heal a lot of those wounds, you know. Then now I kind of feel like I'm, I feel, I do feel healed and I, but I feel like more so uh, my therapist is more so that I don't have to put, when things happen, I don't have to put it on my friends and the people close to me, like venting. Mm-hmm. It's more like I vent to her. <laughs> I'm right there. And so I'm able to vent to her so that I don't have to put that on the people around me because I don't, sometimes it's really dark and it's really heavy and, um. So I would just I would just text her like, hey, I really need to talk right now about, you know, X, Y, Z. And so that's that's more so the purpose that is serving right now. But yeah. Well, congratulations again. I, I, Thank it's, you. It's not lost on me or anybody that, you know, you've just you've just announced that uh, you're going to become a mom for the first time. And I just send heartfelt congratulations to you and Don. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And thank you so much for this record. And uh, I hope we get to talk again soon. Like I said, I, I know that uh, you don't do this very often, man, but I, I, I really appreciate you as an artist. Thank you for having me.